where they would have otherwise have given up, where many have otherwise fallen, and they've gone past that point, and bring their stories to you, number one, as encouragement, number two, as inspiration, and number three, as a learning point, so that you can be able to learn from the things that they have done right. We always say that life is too short to make all the mistakes yourself, and therefore let's learn from, from the things that others have done right so that we can also become better our country can become better and then our businesses can also become better here on the show we've had a couple of young ghanaian entrepreneurs come through we had lloyd kusi penta foods we had sewaduku from chop shop last week and one of my favorites so far we had amin abu bakar good afternoon to you amin if you're listening young gentleman who started and found a way of producing coal for medicinal purposes coal for producing fire coal for doing all sorts of things for doing shisha and found a way of doing it and his own great contract some of those things for the sensitivity of it we didn't mention it on the show and i can't mention it today either but he's making inroads this guy is exporting it and the beautiful thing about what he's doing is that he's not even looking to monopolize the process he says you come to me um with your brand name and tell me where you want to plug into my value chain and i will sit with you and have a conversation and it's great because it's great it's creating opportunities for a lot of people and we want a lot of young people to be inspired. We know that COVID um, brings a lot of bad memories for most of us because we, lo we, we lost some loved ones and people got sick. But COVID also did something really great. What it did was that it forced all of us to go into our rooms and watch television for a very long time in the lockdown. And people began to be ingenious and creative. And you find that many ideas were birthed in that, in that period where people were stuck indoors. And it goes on and on and on. Today, I have another wonderful gentleman uh with me here on the, on the show he's going to be telling us his story um his way and we're going to learn from his experience as well um i will not go through his resume normally i like to do that but i won't go through it because otherwise i take from the start take away from the story that he's going to tell us he's in the person of mr christian boachi yadom it probably doesn't ring a bell if you don't know him but if you've heard about the pizza man or chicken man yes i know that now it rings a bell in your mind. It's a young Ghanaian who actually finished school and started, decided to do this, and now he's all over the place. I was reading up on him, uh, preparing for this show, and I, I thought he had six branches in Accra, and I think seven or so in Kumasi. He tells me that he's got ten branches in Accra now, and eight in Kumasi, and counting. And whoever thought, I mean, sometimes, you know, back in the day, we used to say, oh, Ghanaians don't like to watch their leaning, dirty leaning in public. I remember sometime ago, a couple of friends came from the UK and said, yeah, what kind of business can we do? Let's go into laundry. We say, oh, Ghanaians don't like to watch that. Who told you? People are eating pizza. People are selling coal. Amin was telling us that we say there's no money in Ghana. They're selling charcoal in game. And in shop right. There are always things that you can do to make money. Just think, look at what others are doing and learn from it. Christian, you're welcome to the show today. I'm excited because when we started talking off air, the energy was great. <laughs> I mean, and I'm not going to give away the story yet, but I think that take us through your own experience. I think people have over the last three weeks been excited about the deliveries we've had here because each person's story is unique in their own way and they go through their own challenges and their own processes one of the things that um, i remember amin said last week was that when he decided to sell charcoal and to produce it from the coconut husk he thought to himself and said the people who buy charcoal will not take charcoal advice from me they will take charcoal advice from the woman down the road and theater and theater good afternoon to you if you're listening who has been selling charcoal for over 20 years. When Lloyd came in here, he says, when he decided to make yogurt, he went to Nima to find out from the boys in Nima. Good afternoon to you, all the yogurt makers in Nima this afternoon. And he learned from them. And that's the point I make that there's no need to reinvent the wheel. Let's hear your story. Start, first of all, let's tell us who Christian is. Maybe people think that we have made you up. You're a fictional character. <laughs> <laughs> um, Give us a bit of background, okay. maybe your education, maybe your family, and then we'll go into the business proper. Who's Christian? Uh, Christian Boache, Yadam, as you see. Mm -hmm. um, from high school, was in Kumasi Academy. So you were in Kumasi, you schooled in Kumasi? Yes, I schooled You've got Kumasi. classmates. Yes. Who can identify you? Of course. Okay, please, classmates <laughs> of Christian. When we get interactive, call so that people know that it's an original Ghanaian story. Uh, yeah, so high school, I, I read science. I was in the science class. Right. I think I was there. I was the first science student to be in Timian Prefect and still be first in class. Right. Yes. And then okay. from high school, um, Ken USD, actuarial science. I was the actuarial science president. No, you did actuarial science. Yes. I was the president. You must have been a brainiac back in school. Uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> I am. I'm <laughs> yeah. Actuarial science, uh, 2016, I was the association president. I was in Republic Hall. And Ripple. Yeah. 
uh, once every six morally. <laughs> they used to call me Abodi. Wow. I was, okay, I was, okay. So I was that's your name. Built. Okay. Okay. Yes. Because you know a lot of people back in school don't remember our real names. Yes. I mean there are funny stories about parents coming to look for the children and, and they mention their name Eva and Sankoma and they say there's nobody here like that. Oh, okay for then they'll say Abodi. They say, Ah, okay, okay, we oh, know. Oh the, the 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 real name that most of the students in Kenya University know me with is Chris B. Christian Boache Chris B. Chris B. Because okay. in twenty seventeen I also contested for SRC president. And I there lost. You go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There you go. Yeah. So uh, throughout the elections, I, I got that uh, fame. And then after school, no, even in final year, I decided to do something with the fame that I have. Mm-hmm. So, so I started so many businesses. I mean, I did uh, sales of pen drives, calculators, you know, sales of this Adidas and Nike slides in Kunti. Mm-hmm. And then later I ended up selling food. <laughs> yeah. And you're doing great at it. Yes. But it didn't just start, did it? I mean, it didn't just start easy. It didn't just, you know, just come to you on a silver platter. Oh, no, with the experience on cooking, I um, started cooking at a very early age, at the age of eight. My grandma... So, personally, you cook? Yes. My grandma used to put a chopper. Right. My mom is a What caterer. was it called? I'm sure people in Kumasi will remember. No, my mom, I mean, um, my grandma started a chopper, not in Kumasi, in her hometown, right. in Kranza. In Kranza. Her name is Amabo. She was very popular. She okay. was the, they call it the, the chopper queen. So all the people in Nkranza this afternoon who are listening to us, shout out to you. Yes. So, and then my big sister that actually trained me was also a Ketra. Okay. Uh, I, I lived with her. What's big was, sister's name? Uh, Ernestina Sakodie. Is she listening to us? Uh, I doubt. She's in the Netherlands now. Okay. So at the age of eight, I started cooking. So cooking became part of me. I mean, I found it like a hobby. Right. Until final year, the roommate I settled with, He's my co-founder and mm-hmm. the operations manager. Yeah, currently. I noticed. I, I mean, I saw it in your structure. Yes, yes, yes. So he actually, you know, made me feel like you can make money out of this. I mean, how, how many times something? have we not heard? You know, and I, I want to pause right there. How many times have we not heard about something you love to do easily and you can make money out of it? I was telling the story of Ikea and Tuatufo. She makes BSAP. And at some point, people said, you can do this, Ikea. And she started to do it and started making money out of it. A lot of people, you hear them say, you know, they had it as a hobby. Here you are talking about cooking as a hobby. Oh, yes. And now you're, you're making food. Yes. I, I loved cooking. I mean, in public hall, first year, those are my lane. Whenever you want food, come to my room. And I'm preparing all the types of meals. I mean, from local to continental. So cooking is actually part of me. And then me selling food, although it doesn't match with what I studied in school, mm-hmm. because everyone in my class knew that Chris... After first degree is going Go to, to NASA. I mean, everybody <laughs> knew that Chris is going to be in their academia. And I also love teaching. I was mm. a teaching assistant during my national service time. Right. I also love teaching. And I mean, my lecturers, I mean, at a point, I even felt I have disappointed them. Mm. They were expecting me to, you know, further my studies in the States. Hey, and you have not disappointed PhD. anybody. Your man proposes. I mean, at a point. But God disposes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at a point, that is how they felt. Because, you know, starting the business in final year and mm. after school, it didn't look like what you see now. Yeah. It yeah. was quiet. I wouldn't want to say it was terrible, but then it, it looked like nothing good will come out of it. But I was seeing something different. Mm. You see, mostly when visions come, it's only the, the bearer of the vision who understands it. But the people around will only buy into it when it gets to a certain level. So and, and it's even something I want to punch here. Yeah. That when you have a brainchild, you have an idea, that eureka moment, um, sometimes you know keep it a bit because like he's saying you're the only one who understands where you're taking it don't make it too conversational don't tell the whole world about it and then somebody will end up saying oh it's not a good idea yes. only for you to go to bed and wake up and see that they are doing it yeah you know so try and guard some of these brainchilds until they are mature enough to go out and then you can put them out yeah right yeah. let's keep talking about about the experience and then let's go to how you started mm-hmm. how you started did you start while you were in school? Yes, in final year, second semester. I think um, in 2017, December, myself and Eben, we were in the same room. So yes. when you're going home, we... Thank God for good roommates, eh? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when you were leaving for Accra, I mean, I lived in Accra, I lived in Tema. Right. So we all gave ourselves assignments that you have to come back to school next semester with a business idea. Mm-hmm. Because the businesses we, we tried that semester, they all failed. Right. We did some sort of, you know, should I say money lending in a way? Mm-hmm. We did uh, this sales of uh, pen drives and calculators, you know, we got messed up. 
they even went to the extent of selling this uh, silicon brazier for for ladies i mean mm -hmm. anything for the money you were doing mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. so we felt that those businesses were not working well enough for us so we are coming back to school the next semester that's the final year second semester with the new business idea so in 2018 january i, mean, I think i got mine around 27 december mm -hmm. and i kept it your idea yeah the pizza the pizza thing mm -hmm. initially it was for us to sell pizza in slices because we realized that during student programs they've been seven meat pie and rock bands and cakes for item 13 and i just wanted to change the face of how item 13 should you know appear it shouldn't always be the one way type mm -hmm. so i thought of selling pizza in slices so i came to school the next semester i i, I took the lead to kumasi so even was still in accra mm -hmm. he got back to kumasi and i told him that bro you have to accompany me i have to go and get some item from town mm -hmm. he didn't even bother to ask what you're going to buy mm -hmm. he was like let's go so we went to a doom there's a man called Ofata mm -hmm. and another man called Kolege. Mm -hmm. a doom around Boss FM. They are mm -hmm. very popular. They, they sell is it, this. Is it the same Kolege on social media? I doubt. He, he's not a social media type. Okay. So under one big tree, they sell these used ovens around that tree. Mm -hmm. So we went there and I told the man that um, I need an oven and we're using it to bake pizza. So he suggested an electric oven for us. Mm -hmm. So when I took the oven and even asked, what are you going to do? Say, oh, we are going to sell pizza. He said, hey. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> is, is that where we are now? I said, yeah. So, okay. So, we bought the oven, sent it to our room. We, we had no shop. Mm -hmm. And we are living in the hostel room. So, it was more or less like a homestay. You see, we had this hostel. And then when you move out of campus to a different place, you call it a homestay. Mm -hmm. So, we sent the oven to the homestay uh, in our hall. So, we had to, you know, convert the hall into a kitchen mm -hmm. and start selling. So, that's how we started. It started with a second-hand oven from a doom. One afternoon, I just got the edge that I have to sell the pizza. And I don't want to rest on this idea. Mm -hmm. So, I remember... I you didn't have that. peace about it. I mean, when the, the idea came to you, yes. it kept bugging yes. you until you acted yes. on we it. Yes, you just needed to act and make, start making money. I mean, the goal is start making money. Mm. So, we picked the, the oven into the room and then we started. We started very inexperienced, trust me. I mean, the cooking I knew wasn't pizza. I was coming there. That you, you had the dream, <laughs> you had bought the oven. Yes. You're like, I remember I'm saying, Father, we have the firewood, yeah. Yeah, but where is the lamp? Where is the lamp? <laughs> how did you learn how to make pizza? Okay. Because the idea came to you, pizza. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you were sleeping and you woke up in the middle of the night and you saw pizza. Fine. But did you think of how you were going to learn how to make it? Were you going to buy it? Were you going to order it from someone? How were you going to do it? If you order, if you order a finished product, you never get to know how to do it. Mm. So I have this guy. His name is Prince Owusu. We call him Black. Mm -hmm. I met Black in 2017, way before I even decided to do pizza. But I also realized Black has ideas about cooking. So it's like he also lived with a chef, with a, with a caterer. I also lived with a caterer. So we, we share ideas. So I called Black around that Black. We have to sell pizza. So if you have any ideas, come around and let, let's put things together and start. So mm -hmm. we started with the dough mixing, this from pizza sauce, and then about the toppings. I remember. Did you read about it online? Oh, yes. I, most of my research that I did was on YouTube and Wikipedia. I mean, I just, I just read wide. You know? And that's another thing. You see, these days, you don't have to do things manually again. There's a lot of information available online. Yeah. He's talking about YouTube. Yeah. People teach themselves how to do things they otherwise never knew how to do just by watching learning videos. So you are, you are listening to us this afternoon. You're thinking, what can I do? Once you get the idea, trust me, the learning video is available somewhere on the internet. Go and look for it and teach yourself how to do it and then go ahead and do it so we started with our first pizza we did the samples and it was good i mean at that point it was even good. if you say so or you you ask other people to oh yes i got a couple of friends to come around to taste yeah you know because i did a, i did a student politics i mean my my friends were those who had won positions at the various colleges and the right. src so i called them around because they were the people i was targeting to sell the pizza to mm. during their events so I remember I called one lady uh, with uncle. She was the then SRC Women's Commissioner. Uh, is it Denis Sapon? He was the College of Humanity Social Science mm -hmm. President. Augustine Chumesi was the College Financial of Science student. So I called all of them around, and then we took samples, and they were like, "It's good." So when I when I going to start. So the selling, first pizza was what? The first pizza. <laughs> I don't even have a name for it. We just. <laughs> You just scattered put, everything on it. What did yeah. you put in it? What did you put uh, in we, it? We did a little bit of beef, chicken, some green pepper, onions. Uh, yeah, some. Just mixed it. We just mixed it. I mean, there was no formula. You, you just see? had to come out as yes, pizza. Yes, yes. There was no formula. 
So we did a sample, it was good. And I took my first contract from the then woman uh, commissioner. Mm -hmm. I took a contract of thousand slices. She had a One program. Slices. Yes. So it's like two cities, two cities, thousand. That was two thousand Ghana cities mm -hmm. then. And the contract was on twenty seventh January. We had never done a mass contract before. I mean our first time we just did two pieces. And now we've taken the contract that we have to provide thousand slices. We started around five thirty AM in the morning. We ended around ten thirty PM. We're baking the whole day. And we were able to produce only three fifty slices. <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, three fifty. And not even one quarter of what you require. It was. I mean so we sent it to the event, we even late. She was a bit pissed. I was like, Charlie, this is our first time all, but we try. So this 350 we do. So the other 650 gone. If we buy some meat pie or something. It was <laughs> terrible. And you know, you know the funny thing? We bought inventory for two thousand for thousand I was slices. gonna ask about inventory and packaging and all that. So now we bought the inventory. We can't sell the inventory back to the suppliers. Mm -hmm. We have to bear that cost of the extra 650 and get paid for the 350. So on our mm -hmm. first contract, we made a loss. But it didn't deter you. Oh no. No, I mean, I, I didn't even realize. I, I realized you missed something about accounting. Those times I wasn't doing that. So I was actually spending from my pocket. So. No, well, you are not the first one. I mean, also did for a whole year. Okay. He was using his school fees to do it. Okay. For a very long time. And you I get there. That, yeah. <laughs> Eventually it pays off, doesn't yeah. it? Eventually yeah. Eventually pays Personally, off. my hostel fees, my other guys' hostel fees, I mean, we have raised a lot of things to, you know, keep the business running. But you believed in it. Yes, I, I never. You had the conviction. Yes. And, and and I think sometimes the conviction is what you require. Everything else will fall in line. Yeah. Just keep going. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you, n you never see the road. But mm. keep going. Keep going. The failures will come. I mean, I, I, I recorded a couple of failures. You know, that man that I started at Pisa, I was also doing another event at Mickling Hotel. Mm -hmm. The name of the event was Other Concert. Mm -hmm. And I always say to myself that if I had had a mentor mm -hmm. those days, I wouldn't have even tried that event at all. Mm. But thanks to God, I have a mentor now. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it will be very difficult for me to make certain mistakes now. Yeah. I remember that event. Um, it happened on 10th February. It was a pre vows Day concert. You know, I told you I wanted to do things for money. So, I mean, once I'm going to get money, once I just business get, exactly study, business and involved. So, that event, a day to the program, we lost everybody to an accident in yeah. 2018. Yeah. The program featured Kabna Kabna, Adina, and you're supposed to get him promise on board as well. Can you imagine that a program that we invested about eighty four thousand, I got only six thousand cities as you know, proceeds. Yeah, right re yeah, proceeds. I mean, not not profits. I mean revenue. You're kidding. So six thousand minus eighty four is seventy eight. You're out of pocket by that much. It wasn't even my money. I involved family, <laughs> I involved friends, and I got into debts from that time. Wow. And even through those debts, I was still selling the pizza. It wasn't normal. I don't know where I got that energy from. I don't know mm. where I got that strength from. But I just wake up every day and I go like, it will work out. So let's keep working. Yeah. It will work out. I remember there's a guy called Martin who works with us. One day we were working and one of the guys that I used to owe came around. He was trying to create a scene. So I just stopped working. I moved to him. I went to talk to him and I came back and I started working. And Martin was like, Chris, how do, how do, how do you do it? Because it's like, I maintain the composure as if there was nothing wrong. Yeah. And I kept doing that for like two years. So from 2018, somewhere in June, we closed down because we we're out of funds. Mm. And as as young as we were, I mean, as 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 little as we are as a startup, we, we believed in our branding. So the little money we get, we invest into our packaging, we invest into our art, we invest into how we produce our stuff. So we were always running out of money. But I just had that conviction that let's keep investing into it. It will pay off one day. Mm -hmm. So we broke, uh, we closed down in June. We opened somewhere in August. That was when national service was about to start. So my other guy, Eben, was supposed to go to national college to teach as national service. And I was posted to Kane University as a teaching assistant. Mm -hmm. And Eben made a sacrifice. He was like, Chris, I'm not going to do this national service. I'll stay back for one year. If it doesn't work out after one year, then I'll know that it's not going to work out. Mm -hmm. So he sacrificed the national service, not because I was going to pay him. I mean, we are all working. So in the morning, I'm going to the college as a TA. Then he also, we all picked the Trotsky together and we drop around Victory Towers. That's where we got the shop. Mm -hmm. Then he will, so we moved from our, our hostel room to a shop mm -hmm. with our hostel fees. So, <laughs> we, so we were in hostel fees for national service. 
You Even that money. I haven't asked you about funding because you are telling us your story already <laughs> where you were getting the money from. And it was from everywhere else. Every, everywhere. I mean, <laughs> once once the money is available, we just pick it. So we got the, the shop down there. So he would drop at the hostel. Then I would continue to the college. And then when I closed from class, I joined him there. And there were several times he would move from the shop and come and call me from the lecture theater mm-hmm. that Charlie Pizza was just finished. You have to come and prepare it. I mean, he didn't know the cooking aspect. Mm-hmm. And... I was the chef, but then he's more of the after chef. What's next? I mean, any other time apart from chef, he was doing Packaging, it. Packaging, preparing exactly, it. Exactly. Preparing for delivery, moving it. Correct. So he will move and come and call me. Then I just move from the lecture hall and go and prepare this sauce. And then by the time I leave there, Charlie, everything is messed up. And I still go to class with it. Mm. And I, I, I enjoyed going to class because it was an avenue for me to also market whatever I was selling to the students. And that's what I was going to talk about that. Yeah. What I hear you talk about is that you took advantage of your network. Yes. And your network were your friends. Yes. The people you had contested with yes. for, for election. Yes. And there were people in your class you were teaching. Yeah. All of those people were part of your network. Exactly. And it's important that if you're starting a business, you take advantage of your network. Where do you go to church? Where do you play football? Who are the people who are in your good news club? Where do you, you know, you join some choir? Those are the people who believe in you. And remember that they... Even if they don't believe in your business, you are connected to them by something else before their business came. So they are obliged to give you a hearing. Exactly. And that's where you start from, yeah. really. You yeah. know. So, so tell us about subsequent orders that you got. Okay, so I, I would want to you know, continue from where I... So go ahead, go ahead. Throughout those times in 2018, somewhere in October, mm-hmm. Kenya started a demonstration. The school was closed. And our business was solely dependent on students. On campus. So for about four weeks... We were out of business. Mm. We resumed in October, uh, November 22nd, thereabout. And then, luckily, we got some contracts for this student socializing program that they used to do. And we got some money. But there was a problem. Payment delayed. Mm. So, we had a contract to serve about 500 students. I mean, not only pizza, rice, and other things. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be pre-financed by us because, you know, the school system, they have to present invoices to the accounts for it to be vetted. The bureaucracy and the red tape was too yes. much. So we did all these events by taking loan from elsewhere to fund, I mean, the, the, the program, hoping mm-hmm. that we're going to get paid in the next week. Mm. Kenya University went on break, and then they had to resume the following year, January, somewhere so, 7. So for one year, you didn't get paid? Oh, no, 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 no. From December to the next year. To, to, the, so to it's January. Okay, it's just the following. And thing. then the person we took the money from was expecting that money that week. Mm. So because we couldn't pay on time, the interest on the loan was even higher than the profit we're going to make from that contract. So you know what happened? We lost our profit and it ended up being in debt again. Wow. Yes. That means that you were, you were bleeding in, uh, on, a, on a financial um, literacy side. It was side. massive, massive bleeding. I mean, I lost a lot of blood. <laughs> I don't know how it's still alive. You guys were hemorrhaging. Yes, right? I mean, we were just... And then, you know what? When about these things happen, it, it doesn't discourage me. And sometimes even you'll be like, that is, that is why you are you. Mm-hmm. So don't, 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 don't stop going. That's why you are you. That's why it is you no who is No matter how many that times part. you fail, just Mm-mm. keep going. Mm-mm. So in 2019, we struggled... January, February, somewhere March, April, we closed down again. Wow. A second oh, time. Oh, I mean, we closed down about four times. We closed, we opened, we closed, we opened until June, 2019 June. I remember I told Eben that, bro, we don't have to, we don't have to stay here. It seems we are, we are stuck at one point. I want us to move. Let's move out of Kumasi mm-hmm. and let's go with our document. It's something that shows that we do business because... I believe that this thing is going to work. Everyone was like, yes, it's going to work, but how? I was like, we need big money. I mean, the monies we are working with, we need big money. Mm-hmm. Even with our raw materials, if you are getting big money, we can buy in bulk and cut down costs. We can do this and do that and do that. It was like, yes, it's true, but how? So we left, we left Kumase. It was a move of faith. We didn't know where we were going to. We just left Kumase to Accra. Even lives in Tema. I was at Dansoman, but then we just left. So we came to Accra, we moved to Tema, I was with Eben, in, mm-hmm. um, uh, with his sister. Mm-hmm. You know, all those times, I was supposed to further my education outside Ghana. Mm-hmm. And I was tagged as a stubborn boy because I didn't want to go to school. And I'm still to stay and sell pizza. Exactly. And a true science it doesn't make top sense. class student. Yes. So I had some, you know, friction with my family because 
like I'm being stubborn. They don't know what is over me. Some even felt that I'm being worked by. You're probably going to become Ghana's first NASA. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so while staying with Eben, those times I I lost the touch with my family because you know I was painted as a bad boy, and I understand and, them. And that was a big sacrifice. Oh yes, I mean I I was ready to risk everything for that. I understood them at a point because it's like they want to carve your life for you. They want to. But but are they proud of you today? Oh yes. They paid oh, them, yes, didn't yes. They? Yes. So with Eben, we had radio. I mean, somebody's radio, not even in that house. Do you have a business? Are you a startup? Do you want to fund them? Blah, blah, blah. Call this number. I say, hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. They're talking to us. Yes. So I picked the number I called, and that was Quick Angels. Mm. Right here, Circle. Yeah. And, you know, we've been moving around Circle. We never saw that building, but it was there. Mm-hmm. So we picked the number. I called. We went in. We told them, okay, this is what we do. We sell pizza. We are from K University. Mm-hmm. Uh, the business consultant we met, Mrs. Lamte, she was like, but why do you want to sell pizza? I mean, first class student, and I went to was reading mathematics. Equally good. He also got scholarship to go to the States to further, I mean, to do his master's. People said, no, you want to sell pizza. Yes. So she was Ghana like... Ghana thanks you for your sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he was like, then there must be something special about yeah. why you want to sell pizza so she even got interested she was like okay then gather your business plan and come for pitching mm-hmm. we said okay so we left and then yesterday was exactly three years that we went for pitching 28th june wow yes so were you successful excellent mm. so we left came back on 28th june in 2019 we went with samples of the pizza how we got the samples ready i don't want to even go there that was another hassle on this one mm. but we just got the samples ready we went in and then we started our pitch now around 10 p.m. Whilst we were there, people were going in, coming out, going in, coming out. And I was like, ah, so these people, don't they close? It's 10. And they are still in the office working. Mm-hmm. So we started with our presentation. We gave out, I mean, a brief history about us, what we've been doing. We gave out the figures. I mean, our production cost, you know, the gross profit margin. You know, because we, we do, we did actuarial science and maths. I mean, those figures are they easy for us to. Exactly. Easily. We did that and... That was when we won the funding. And since then, it's been success back to back to back to back. And the mentor I was speaking about is actually the CEO, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the CEO and the founder of Quick Angels, Mr. Richard Niamakwe. Right. That man, I don't know, but then maybe you are yet to experience him. The little I've learned from him. You see, some of his workers even say that I'm like Junior, junior Richard because mm-hmm. whatever he tells you, in business, if it doesn't happen today, it happen tomorrow. So he's probably had a lot of experience. A lot. So I mean, so much experience. Mm. He's the he's the he's the founder of Quick Credit. Right. Yes. I mean, if you, if you've seen their cars moving up and down yes. here and there, and the number of people he's been supporting with loans in a day, I mean, in a week, you have no idea. Richard Ni Amakwe. Yes. Kwe, you said. Yes. Good afternoon to you, sir, and thank you for supporting young <laughs> entrepreneurs in Ghana. Uh, like yeah. chicken man and pizza, pizza man. man yeah. How did you start doing chicken? Answer that for me, and then we'll get interactive with the chicken. Yes. How did we start? Okay, so after, so initially it was just pizza man, mm-hmm. and then the next day, I think after our pitching, we had another meeting, and you know we had a lot of ideas already. So he was like, "What is the most consumed food in Ghana?" Like it is rice. <laughs> rice goes with what? Mm-hmm. Chicken. So if there's pizza man, and you want to sell chicken. Then we call it Chicken Man. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the Chicken Man idea came two days after we just got the funding. It's like, okay, we can't be selling pizza I throughout. Yeah. We have to give customers varieties. If you don't want pizza today, you can eat jollof with chicken. You can mm-hmm. eat fried rice with chicken. And we decided to stick with chicken only. So, we don't sell beef. You don't sell fish. It's just chicken. Right. So, if there's Pizza Man, then there'll be Chicken Man. That's how the Chicken Man idea came about. But it's distinctive. It's different. Because I've heard some of your people talk and... Um, I'm hoping that we can get through to some of them, some of your customers. Mm-hmm. And there's a particular taste mm-hmm. for which reason they keep coming back. Yes. So you did something different with your recipe. Well, yeah, I mean, we just used the local spices. Mm. And then, make, I mean, I told you I've been cooking since eight. So, mm. I mean, com- combining ingredients is... is did some, is, some yes. magic somewhere. <laughs> interesting, interesting, yeah. interesting. If you just joined us, this is Masterclass here on your Superstation Joy 99.7. We're going to be getting interactive right now. Um, but before we do that, we'll take a quick message from our sponsors. We'll be right back. 
Your favorite on-air business development program, Joy Business Masterclass, is in session. And you can interact with us on Facebook via the Joy 99.7 FM or Joy Business pages. If you tweet, the handle is at Joy 997 FM or at Joy Business GH. Don't forget to hashtag JB Masterclass. You can also call us on 0302-216541 or send your questions and contributions through to the WhatsApp number 0551 one 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 nine nine seven and our facilitators will address your concerns attention everyone class is in progress Welcome back. If you just tuned in, this is Masterclass here on your Superstation Joy 99.7. We're still here on the Startup Dialogue series, and today we're spending time here with Christian Bwachi Yadom, otherwise also known as the Chicken Man or the Pizza Man. He's also telling us his story, rather interesting story. We'll be opening the phone line shortly so that you can also ask your questions or make contributions. And we're hoping to also get a call through to one of his customers so that they can give us an independent opinion of the experience they've had with him. But definitely, I mean, these are young Ghanaians who are doing it and are an inspirational story for everyone who also wants to do business. If you've got any motor vehicle of any kind before we get interactive, Goal has some great news for you. Goal is rewarding all of his prepaying Go customers with up to two persuasive liter discount on all fuel purchased. Elevate your goodness by joining the Goyle Go Club today and enjoy up to three persuasive liter discount on all fuel purchased. Goyle, good energy. Goyle, Yenara, Yedia. Phone lines are now open. Numbers to call 03022 that's 0302216541. You can also send us your comments on 0551111997. Um, suffice it to say that uh, Christian has offered to give the first five callers. You notice that all of the people who have been coming here on the show are also giving out freebies to our listeners because we also want it to be a part of our success story. So he's offered to give um, a lunch pack uh, to f the first five callers, Chicken Man, Pizza Man. So after you're done speaking to me on air, if you do put your call through, Please stay on the line and speak to our production crew who will take your details and then tell you how you can access um, Chicken Man or Pizza Man this afternoon because you called us. Phone lines are now open. Numbers to call 0302-216541. You can also send us your comments on 055 While we're waiting for the phone lines to ring, let me ask you this about challenges. I know you talked about having shut down about four times and all of that. But what, what do you consider to be the greatest challenge which almost made you stop? That was a battle between uh, me deciding to go to school or sell pizza. You know, in 2020, March, mm. after the 2019 efforts failed for me to go outside, I mean, there was still another, I mean, chance for me to go. Mm -hmm. So I actually left to Germany. I was in Berlin. Mm -hmm. I left on 9th March, and the plan was to return the following week without the notice of my family. I just wanted to go for them to know that I'm out. Mm -hmm. And I returned the, the following week. And then the following week, uh, there was a declaration of lockdown. Because of no. COVID. No. So I had to stay. <laughs> I had to stay in Germany for like three months before coming back to Ghana. And whilst I was there, you know, you see that business. Those times, we just came USD branch. Just one branch. And we were not even selling up to 10000 a day. Hold that thought for me. I've got a caller on the line. Good afternoon. You're welcome to Masterclass. Your name and where you're calling from. Yeah. Oh, my name is Yauduku. Yauduku. Yeah, where are you calling me yeah. from this afternoon? Actually, I, I'm in town. So, oh, in Accra. But, but, in, okay, in Accra. Yeah, I, you, I, I say no condition. Right. You're, you're the first person who has called me today. So you've won for yourself a lunch pack from Chicken Man this afternoon. Thank you very much. So stay on the line once we're done speaking and then my, my crew will speak to you. Okay. Talk to me, Yao. Yeah. Um, in fact, I, I stay in North Carnation area, and I saw their restaurant that they just opened. And I went in there. I've, I've been there a couple of times already, and I want to say their food is great. Wow. But what really excites me, the first time I, I went there, I was just a, li a little bit curious mm. that this church restaurant are coming up. So I asked and I wanted to know whether the owners were Ghanaian. And I spoke to <laughs> so, some of your um, uh, ladies there, I mean, wait, wait, wait. I spent some time just to be sure. Mm. And I am excited and happy to see such things happen in this country. Thank you. God Thank bless you. you. May you be 
bigger and more successful than what you've done. Mm. These are the stories I'm so proud of. Because mm. I always get worried that almost every restaurant in town belongs to some foreigner out there, and we all go and buy skin and eat. I'm so happy that a Ghanaian has done this. Wow. Thank you wow. so much. God bless you. Thank you so God much, Yao. You. We're grateful and we're inspired to do more. The purpose of this Starter Dialogue series is to inspire so that people can do more. I've got some messages on social media. Okay. But before I go there, I've got another caller on the line. Good afternoon. You're welcome to Masterclass. Your name and where you're calling from. Good afternoon. My name is Samuel. I'm calling from Kutubabi. How is Kutubabi this afternoon, Samuel? Oh, very, very, very close. Chris. Great, great. You won for yourself a lunch pack from Pizza Man this afternoon. So stay on the line once we're done speaking and my production crew will... Take your details. I'm grateful. Talk to me. I'm also a level 200 uh, Ghana Telecom University. Right. And I've learned that effective associates peace. The people you associate with your campus, mm -hmm. they're the same people that help you when you are in need. Indeed. Indeed. So you need to build a good relationship so that when you start a business, it is easy for you to market. Right. That's what I've learned from you this afternoon. Thank you so much. Watch your associations. That's a contribution this afternoon. I've got a comment on social media. This one is from Napo. Napo says, this is an inspiring story. Success does not come cheap. Thank you, Napo, for your comment. I've got another one. Um, this one says, Josephine from Kasua says, I just decided to try Pizza Man as Chicken Man. Mm -hmm. He's done a great job, and I admire him so much. Keep it up. This is Josephine from Kasua. Josephine, thank you for reaching out to us. There's someone who says, um, okay, this is Rodney Boating Sapong. Rodney says, I know him so well, and everything Chris B is saying <laughs> is true. God bless him. There's someone who says that the WhatsApp people also want uh, free pizza. <laughs> Can I have that message? Um, I'm, I'm going to, oh, this is now. I knew it was going to be now. Now, good afternoon to you. Okay, so now um, I will use my my <laughs> my presenter powers to give you one of the pieces this afternoon you are my third winner for today even though you haven't called you're a consistent winner so um reach out to us send your details and then we'll try and reach out to you uh and then you've you've won for yourself some pizza i've got another caller on the line good afternoon you're welcome to master class your name and where you're calling i think i've lost the caller please call back we definitely want to hear your comments i've got edem from tem on social media edem says christian's business story is very inspiring I congratulate him for holding on to the vision despite the diversion to travel out of Ghana. And this is Edem from Tema. Edem from Tema, thank you so much for your comments. Let's keep the comments coming too. Somebody says, we are here to... Um, who is that? Is it about my pizza tonight? Now is a, an ardent listener of my show. So, um, you didn't add your name. If you had added your name, I would have given you an extra pizza. But while we're waiting for the phone lines to ring, uh, I'm... See if you can get Hannah for me on the line. I want to speak to Hannah this afternoon. Hannah is a client of um, Chicken Man, and uh, we're trying to get some independent opinion from her. But tell us the most challenging experience that yeah. you had. So, um, <clears throat> as I said, yeah. um, I had to decide mm -hmm. to choose whether I should further my education, do the master's in uh, it was finance and investment, or return to Ghana and sell pizza. You know, I've had to make that decision before. Okay. I will say it on air. I'll tell you off air the decision I made. Okay. I had to decide, if I say, people will know the end <laughs> of it, but I had to make such a decision. I mean, it wasn't an easy decision. That's yeah. why I respect the decision that you made yeah. so much. So what did you do? So, I mean, I, I spoke to my mentor. It was like, come on, let's make money together. Mm -hmm. And it was easy for me to believe because I've seen him living the life I've, I've been dreaming of. So, mm -hmm. like, okay, then I'm coming. So I had to join the repatriation flight those days. I didn't even wait for them to open borders. Mm. So somewhere 21st June, I joined the repatriation flight to Ghana. We went for quarantine at Aliza Hotel. Stayed there for 14 days. I remember when I got to Ghana, I didn't even have cash on me. So he's the one who even paid for my quarantine fee. This time we were paying like 800 cities a day. Wow. Yeah, he paid for everything. I went for quarantine. I came out. When I left, the very first place to go to was his office. Mm. I've arrived and I'm in for business. And my other guy, Eben, was so excited because when I left, he felt like a part of him a is gone. A part of him was gone, yeah. How does he continue? Yes. And when I came back, I mean, the energy came and, you know, we started moving. So from Kenya University, we worked for like 11 months. We opened our second branch the same year in 2020 at Sofo Line in Kumase. Then the following year in 2020, uh, 2021, we did a Hojo branch in June, making three. That was just last year, June. So a year today, 
we had just three branches. Then from Ahoju in June, in July, we did Swami, making four. In August, September, we did airport, making five. And then um, in November, we did uh, Dakoju making six. And that was the first pizza drive-thru we have in Ghana, pizza drive-thru. I mean, mm -hmm. we don't have pizza drive-thru in Ghana. We brought the first pizza drive-thru. Mm -hmm. Then in December, we came to Accra last year with four, putting us to 10. Wow. And then this year, we did February, Wager. We did May, Tema. And another one in Kumasi again, giving us 13. Let me ask you this question. Uh -huh. When I, I hear stories like this, I think value chain. Yeah. So who's who's providing your water? Who's providing your boxes? Hmm. Who's taking out your trash? Who's <laughs> who's doing your deliveries? Okay. How do other people plug in to your value chain? Also, okay. we have we have a couple of Ghanaian businesses that we are working with. So so people can get in touch with you, and plug into your business. Oh, sure. Into your value chain. If they have a good offer and they are providing us with good you know products, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Right. You'll be giving us your final comments shortly. Um, sure. But I've got a few more comments on social media. Uh, if can, okay, this one is from Veronica. It says, good afternoon, please. This is Veronica. Can he please share some of the branches so I can be there? Very quickly, can you just... just I'm really proud of him. Kudos. Just so in Accra, we have Dan Soman uh, exhibition. We have Awushi Bayard. Mm -hmm. We have Weja SCC. Uh, we have Kaswa, the new market. Mm -hmm. We have Tema, Total Falling Station, Comte 10, Hospital Road. We have East Ligon. That's quite popular. We have uh, Nana Chrome Falling Station on the road to East Ligon Hills. We have Kissiman close to uh, Kissiman Melcom. Mm -hmm. We have um, uh, <laughs> a lot. We have uh, Kumasi K N U S D. We have Sofolan. We have Ahonjo. We have Macro. We have Dakojom. Um, we have um, uh, Tanoso opposite the University of Education Miniba. Yeah. And we have uh, Airport Runabout in Kumasi. Yeah. And you could just go online and check them out. I mean, I checked them out before I came here. Yeah. These days, Google will help you do everything. Kweku Asari Frimpon from Teshi says, I really enjoy your conversations. Good afternoon, sir. I want to start my own business, but the startup money. Please, look no further. We just talked about quick angels. Get in touch with... Is there a number you want to put out? I can, I can give the contact of the business consultant out. Please. I mean. So just, just make it ready. He'll put a number out when he's rounding up. And then you get in touch with these guys, and they'll help you. And it's not just Quick Angels. There are a lot of people who are waiting to um, help you uh, with your businesses. This one says, Mam Lee from Dansuman. I'm so impressed about the story. Good afternoon, Yao. You have to send me one of the pieces to try. <laughs> I always listen to Master Clan. Mam Lee, because you have asked. Uh, the Bible says that ask and you shall receive. So you are my fourth winner for today. You also get a, a lunch pack. But we need your details so that the crew can reach out to you. I've got one more pizza to give out, but I think my time is up. This one is Norbert. Norbert says, hello, good afternoon. My sister and I also want some pizza. Hey, all right, wow, though. <laughs> okay, so you get my fifth pizza for today. My production crew will take note of that and they'll reach out to you. Final comments. If someone is listening today, speak directly to them, inspire them in about 30 seconds. And let's okay. wrap up. So, there is nothing like a perfect condition. When you say all things being equal, all things will never be equal. So, if you want to start something, don't, don't, don't wait for anything. I mean, it starts. If you don't take step one, you will never see step two. If you want to see the first 10 steps before you move, then I'm sorry, you will never move. Mm. I mean, you will never see even the second step. But just, just keep moving. When you get to the bridge, you cross it. Keep moving. And if you share your dream to someone and the person doesn't understand you, don't stress. End the conversation. There are people who will buy into your idea. And trust me, they will, they will just love and support whatever you want to do. And believe in yourself. And don't do things because people are doing it. Mm. Look within you. There is something special in you and you can just make so much out of it than to be looking at people. That's what I can say. Is there yeah. a number we want to put out? And, uh, my, a number for... If anybody wants to call. If you want to order for pizza, or want to reach me. Want to reach you. <laughs> so that you can mentor them. Wow. Or lead them to Richard. <laughs> Richard didn't get time. I mean, he's okay, so busy. So, yes, yeah, so you, you mentor them then. Okay, so my, my call number is 020 656 2819. Okay, you can take that yeah. again slowly. 020 656 2819. Okay, Tom Brown, you, I've seen your question, but I'm, I've run out of time. So, he says, 
Tom Brown is asking that this is exciting and he's impressed about how fast the surge in Accra is, is happening for the brand. My question is, how is he able to go opening places when others are not fully established? He doesn't stop. He keeps going. But call the number and you get a, a full version of the story. This has been another edition of the Startup Dialogue series here on Masterclass. Exciting conversation with Christian Boachi Yadom, otherwise known as the Pizza Man or the Chicken Man. And so we come your way again with another edition of Masterclass. Thank you for joining us today and see you same time next week. Thank you.